special meeting of the Florida School Committee on Monday, September 13th. Deb, please call the roll. Mr. Ivan? Here. Mr. Costa? Here. Mr. Hart? Here. Mr. Hetzel? Mr. Corey? Ms. Larrabee? Here. Mayor Keegan? Here. Salute the flag, please. to work on is to model best practices to, for our staff. 
are aimed at nurturing a district culture of achievement in the, uh, throughout our entire district where we have reflect, reflective practice and we use data to guide our work. Um, so uh, I am uh, particip participants in the lunch leadership. As you know that you um, invested in lunch leadership. I will also be an active participant in that in the um, leadership academy and the coaching. I am a participant in the new uh, superintendent's induction program. Went to a training this um, summer and I have monthly uh, uh, sessions with them as well as a coach that's assigned to me and I will be an active uh, participant in the uh, planning and facilitation of monthly principals meetings and uh, create a cycle for school visits as well as a cycle for consistently and regularly providing uh, principals with feedback. Um, as you can see each of the goals follows the documentation that uh, we should see uh, at, throughout the year, um, learning materials and samples from the lunch leadership, as well as notes and agendas, uh, attendance at all these PD sessions, school visits, and then we'll be able to measure it by having documented application of these learning the follow through, as well as monthly feedback to the principals. Every principal should receive feedback uh, once a month, and we will have an established cycle for school visits. Um, from our uh, senior staff team and evaluation of school and district leaders in accordance to DESA regulations. And then the other goal is collaborating with um, district and school-based leaders to develop and implement effective plans, procedures, routines, operational systems to address safety concerns, um, social-emotional support for our students. And then again, we have the activities we have um, uh, executive team meetings that happen weekly, uh, monitoring of our district improvement plan, which we met as a district team to revise and adjust, and then the monitoring of our schools, school improvement plans, which are aligned with our district improvement plan, and the establishment of a system for regular communication with staff and families. Um, and then again, agendas, notes, that this is how we will document that that's happening feedback cycles for departments and communication samples of what we are working on. And we're gonna measure our growth. You should be able to see at minimum one mass communication to families each month in at minimum three languages and three different formats via email, a phone call, memo, uh, quarterly updates on progress towards meeting the district improvement plan goals and 100% of our schools will receive training on safety protocols. Does anyone have any questions on the student I have one on Yep. Thank you, Ms. Uh, the, the safety protocols, is it still the Alice training? Is it is it done by uh, Joe Correa? Is that? Yeah, Joe, Joe, Joe yeah. he's actually scheduling those uh, throughout, the, throughout the district with uh, school leaders. Okay. It's, what, it's not uh, Alice, it's similar to Alice, but it's um, a modified version. Okay. Now, is that the only training? Joe's doing or the other components to different trainings? They're, well, I mean, they, they have lockdown trainings, they have you know fire drill trainings. Everybody needs to make sure, we have to make sure we're monitoring that everybody has <coughs> practice those trainings that staff and students, we are all aware that, um, you know, emergency can, emergencies can arise at any time. And all schools before, is there a deadline before all the schools to get their first training? Or he has a cycle and okay. when we, would be, um, so we'll take feedback to okay. make sure that we have a date for um, the completion of all um, the, the, the trainings. Thank you. Are you open? Anything further? All right. Who are you referring to? I just didn't. I missed sorry? the part about where I'm here was about the safety of the question. Oh, the last part of it. Second page, third down. Right before district improvement goals. Training on safety training. 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 It's the back of page one. Yeah. For page one. Sorry. It's the back of page one. And did you say, Mrs. Ponce, that it was, we're not doing Alice? It's not, um, Al, it is, it, Alice training has changed, right? So he, are, he is doing lockdown training and he's doing, he's been to training and he's training all schools in different ways to, um, uh, to be safe in schools, but it's not Alice. Um, there's, that's not the training that we use. 
So it's just a modified Alice? Yes. We did at one point switch to Alice. Absolutely. Totally. Absolutely. So now this is a new change from Well it's 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 different because even Alice before used to used to lock down so that now they they've shifted out <coughs> here. Sometimes you would leave the assigns a, a spot where whatever's the safest. So it's not necessarily follow that Alice. Um, right. We're just doing a different lockdown than we exactly. did, which is very close to Alice. Yeah. Exactly. My only comment on it is I like the part where you're trying to model this with what the teachers and other staff would do. I do think that this, I mean, it's only the first draft of it. It's very lengthy. It is. There's a lot here. So at the end of um, the year, when we try to determine whether we met or not, this is going to be very confusing. Um, in some way, so if I could just recommend possibly trying to combine them a little bit so that we, there's some things that are in here that I think you're going to do no matter what, whether they're, they're just natural occurrences of running the school district. Maybe take those out and only focus on the ones that are actually something that. The big bucket items. Yeah, because I, I, as I was looking through this, I said, oh yeah, I know that, we'll be doing that, I know you'll be doing that, I know you'll be doing that, but almost as a, um, a given. And, and pull out maybe only the one so that at the end of the evaluation when we decide where we mark it, yes or no, it's a little clearer. Okay. Um, and I can talk to you offline about that as well. But um, the first part of student learning goals is just because the numbers are yeah, We don't have, uh, the state hasn't established targets. If you recall, MCAS last year was administered, but it was administered as in a modified version, uh, only one session, and it was uh, administered for the purpose of diagnostic. Our job is to take that diagnostic data and decide how we're going to use it to address students' um, learning gaps. But what is the goal? We don't have we don't have it yet because we haven't got been given the targets. That will be released hopefully within a month when the state will quantify it and give you a number. And in lieu of it, they don't do a topic. If they say we're going to just do the best we can, you know. Oh, they'll give us a target. You're going to have some kind of number that yeah. we know uh, about. Yeah, it. they'll give us a target. Yeah, I, I just like that. We have numbers saying there. Yes yeah. yeah, so or no, did we make progress? It's a very clear thing, yes or no. Yes, so I agree. That's my only feedback. Thank you for the presentation. Thank you, Mr. Chen. Um, Superintendent, do you, uh, for the 100% um, schools, we'll see training on safety protocols? We've done it throughout the district um, many times uh, throughout, the, throughout the years, correct? Yeah, I mean, I. I can't speak that we've had a we've met that goal 100 percent in every single building because I was in charge of my own building, right? right? But I'm assuming that we did. I mean, and that's something that has to be done yearly. Yeah, right. Is there any going? Is there going to be any kind of? Um, and I, you know, I know we've got to do the whole district has to be, uh, you know, shoot for 100 percent. Is there going to be any kind of like emphasis on the new school at Derby? Oh. I mean, it's going to obviously take a lot more. Um, what, what? So what gets? What's what happens in a, in a new school like like Derby? Is, is there anything different from like a cusp or because it's a much bigger school and there's more? Right, it's a much big, bigger school. There are many more entrances and exits, yeah. many more staff. So that will they're they're going to need a comprehensive training um, in regards to safety. I know that they did some uh, they up front with some training, but I think that Joe Gray and the uh, security team as well as the SROs will um, work with the right staff to make sure. And it's, it's pretty much has kind of begun already over at the school? Well, they're, they're already starting to schedule those, so I will make sure that I, I communicate that information on Friday yeah. um, to, to see who's already scheduled. All right, thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you, Kevin. Just a follow on the number three special ed programming. This on the the second page of that refers to a lot of times to uh, numbers, 10% of uh, focus on inclusion, 3% um, increase in inclusion, 3% in the number of MCAS also. And then can we get the data that goes along with that as well? That, that results in setting those goals? Yeah, so like I'm here, when you say 3% in increase in inclusion programming, well, what does that mean if from numbers? Blank is it, to blank. Are we going to move like one kid? You know, or is it, Absolutely. You know, and there's another one in around the um, basically it was about ten percent somewhere. The same theory, just um, if we can get the background data, that would uh, would help us as well. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yep, that right. would, I mean, that's pretty, usually pretty standard. So yes, we usually say moving 3% from this to this. So when we tweak the, this and adjust, we'll include that. Thank you. We didn't even get to that section yet, Mr. Idea. I feel you read the first part. Oh, I think it's Well, I only, 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 I the, the state, DESE, released an accel acceleration roadmap um, that we aligned automatically our district improvement plan to um, the acceleration roadmap, and it's broken down into phases. So we're going to implement our district improvement plan uh, that's already aligned. Our, and really, the focus of the acceleration roadmap is to create, uh, in recognition that kids have been away for 18 months, we want to create a sense of belonging in school, welcome kids back, continuous monitoring of students. We know that we've had students um, uh, learning gaps that were created as a result of them being away. So we need to be monitoring student progress, um, accelerating students that need to be accelerated, and creating scaffolds and, and supports for students who need the additional support while teaching grade level curriculum, right? We wanna make sure we have opportunities to um, support students with prerequisite skills, right? That's where schools have wind blocks or intervention blocks, and we also, we don't want to create a gap as we close a gap. So we don't want to say, oh, these kids are behind, so we're going to be teaching third grade curriculum instead of fourth grade to close that gap because we're creating another gap on the other end. So what we need to do is be teaching fourth grade standards and creating opportunities for intervention to uh, uh, um, address those skills that are lacking for students. So that's going to be our focus with, we want to make sure that kids have access to grade level curriculum, have access to supports as we continue to address their lack of skills and move them forward and accelerate them. Okay? So, do you want me to go through which one of those things or just focus on the goal itself? Right, focus on the goal itself. Okay. So the other, the other, the second goal is on student support services. Obviously, we want to create that sense of belonging, create a safe environment for students to return to school, and engage our students and, and, and families, right? So we're going to make sure that we're building the capacity of our staff, um, uh, making sure that our students, our SACs, our counselors are equipped with the um, knowledge and the training as they deal with trauma-sensitive um, uh, issues that are coming up as a result of all this work, our kids had a lot of trauma, and this is just compounded some of that. Um, we're going to make sure that we're collaborating and coordinating community partnerships to address student need, and um, student, uh, we're gonna be collecting, analyzing, looking at data to create opportunities to increase um, engagement. One of the things that we need to do a, a better job is to really involve our families and figure out how do we uh, one of the things we heard um, as a result of the shutdown was um, kids were home and we expected parents automatically to become teachers. And we need to create opportunities to help our parents to help their children, right? So have some uh, programming and opportunities to uh, support families and supporting students. And if we do all that, we should be able to increase our student attendance because we're going to create these environments where kids are going to be connected to school and they're going to be coming to school, right? Decrease our suspensions because our kids are going to want to be in school. We have to teach our kids those social skills and really make sure that they are ready to learn, right? The next goal is special ed programming. I think Mr. Aguiar already. Sure. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Also, oh, he's broken. Yes. Do you have a targeted goal in mind for? You say the increase in daily attendance over SY20 measures. Is there any a frame for that framework for that in terms of percentages? I mean, last year's attendance, I mean, we heard the presentation, it was um, you know, terrible. Yep. And so when you say increase it over SY, SY20 measures, are we talking five percentage points, 10 percentage points, or? 
You're I just think looking you need to increase it over last year. Well, it's not necessarily. That's not, that be a, 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 last year that's cannot not be a barometer uh, right. because right. our attendance was horrendous. Mm -hmm. um, I think that we need to look at what our typical attendance was. We have not, obviously, we're going to be receiving our data for attendance. It's, uh, we have to look at what a typical year looked like. And even then, we needed help, right, to increase our attendance. I do think that we went back and forth whether we really need to call out and have a separate goal. We are requiring all schools to have a separate goal, calling out attendance, increasing daily attendance, and decreasing chronic absenteeism. So if that's the feedback, we will create one that just simply calls out our attendance. I mean, of all the other things that I've read so far, and we're still working our way through this, you know, one of the more important things I think it has to be set in your goals is your expectation that this district has improved attendance. Yep. Um, that's something that's been sort of haunting this district for years, long before you, long before the prior superintendent. So at some point, there's got to be this all hands on deck call to action approach that it's not going to happen anymore. And I think it's got to stop with you and your goals. And then it's got to filter down to what your expectations are and goals for your principals. Mm -hmm right down to, your, to the school adjustment counselors, the tenants offices, et cetera. But, but it's got to stop here, I think, uh, because if it's not well defined in your goals, I think it becomes more difficult to make it an emphasis or emphasis um, for your building leaders and, and their staff as well. So um, I would support, and again, I'm just having a conversation because it's a draft, but I would encourage you to be a standalone goal of yours to, you know, sorry, essentially the importance of it and that the committee's going to hold you as our superintendent um, to that standard of attendance does matter and, and we're going to make it an all hands on deck approach to improve it. And so I, I raise that because you know I think just simply increasing daily attendance over SY20 measures, you know, I don't know that that's got a lot of emphasis on it or a lot of um, high expectations in terms of what we're looking to do. My hope is that we do, <clears throat> given what I saw in the presentation I heard last year. Um, you know, I think some of that could happen on its own without even trying. I, I think we need to put more emphasis on it. That's all. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it, it will look similar to our achievement data, right? So just like our individual schools set goals for increasing uh, ELA, math, and science um, data, as well as attendance, then we also take that and look at where we stand as a district and create a standalone goal that um, stands out and speaks loudly that kids need to be in school in order for them to learn. Yep. Okay. We will do that. Question? Oh, that's very good. So I agree with the Costa on tweaking this a little bit. But I think what we should have, we've never had, it always looks like we say that we hold the superintendent accountable, the superintendent holds the principals accountable for their buildings. But we never see anything that looks like that. So in my mind, if all of the school improvement plans have a goal that says my school will improve by X to Y, whatever it is, this goal should be articulating what those are. And then you're going to hold those schools accountable to each of those. So if we're measuring the success, if you have 12 schools and none of them met their, their numbers, then you didn't meet your number. You know, rather than have them, it, it becomes more clear that way than just dump them all together and say, we'll improve our overall attendance by. Case in point, last year we had COVID, we had all this uh, remote learning. Consistently, I would tell the superintendent, if we have one school doing very well, and whatever it is, why doesn't every school deal with the same thing? And the answer we always got was, so we're not talking about that. Or, excuses really if, if one person if the schools can do the right thing then the other school should be doing the same so i would recommend that you include all of that in um in here so that it, it's not jumbled up it's going to be very clear and that would include um i mean that's good feedback right so we have the goal and we have the key actions part of that is monitoring the uh, tenant schools or the schools that would be the key action and the the um benchmark would be that five out of the 12 schools are we, you know, and having like quarterly uh, check-ins or however have we, we determine that. 
and creating short-term goals if schools are not meeting their goal or they're not close, nobody's gonna meet their goal first term, right? But if we can see the trajectory if they're going where, they're, where they are so that we can start making adjustments and create short-term goals. So we'll articulate all that and frame it the same way that these goals are, but creating the 10 school with specific actions as well as benchmarks. Yeah, no, I, I think that would be, uh, would be a good thing. And at the end of the day, I know we have the attendance uh, mm -hmm. uh, policy on, but if we focus on measuring it like this, there will be no longer any excuses of why schools don't implement what we say. So if, if the attendance thing that we're going to approve later articulates we're going to do this when the kids out, we're going to do this, we're going to do this, we're going to pick them up, there's no excuse why they can't do that. They should be implementing it with fidelity, which if you put it in your goal, I think it's going to strengthen that, the teeth behind it. So thank you. Very much. Good. All right, so the next one is the special ed programming, and I think Mr. Igard had um, um, jumped to this one just a few minutes ago. So again, we're going to continue to strengthen the overall design and implementation of our special needs um, programming, including the structures uh, and taking the recommendations from the Walker Report as well as the DESI audit and adding them to, um, to the um, uh, uh, plan, to the goal. So we have some partnerships that we're working with as well as um, you know, some work that we're doing with the SPED department. And uh, also, um, we are, I know that uh, Mr. Loesch, uh, we have lots of PD over the summer to support um, reading intervention and math intervention so that our team could support our students and our teachers better. So um, I, I think we've already written down that that data leads to the 3% increase needs to be uh, uh, judged against the previous data from blank to blank. Um, we're going to be doing that and then um, continue to, to look at that to the targets, to meet the targets. Any other questions from Mr. Edgar? Yeah, I think this will be a topic at one of the subcommittees uh, when we get around to having those, but um, it's hopefully sooner than later. But uh, the, com the comment that the Office of Special Level Identify Reading and Life School Program for our Office Inspection and Community Based Programs. I'd like to see some sort of um, goal around a review of all of those programs and how we're going to implement changes. I know that it sprinkles within all of these goals. But if we can have one focus specifically on that population, mm -hmm. it'll give us a, a framework for where uh, it needs to go. It doesn't have to be necessarily part of these goals, but I think that uh, a full review of that, all those programs could be part of the goal. Okay. That by the end of the year, we're gonna actually get to know exactly what we have, whether we have to bring in experts to look at things and recommend stuff. But then at the end of the year, we're gonna have a new type of uh, program that services those children. Thank you. Are you okay? <coughs> We're actually are going to tap into your update. <coughs> because we need to um, our next goal is student success pathways. We've done some uh, great work with expanding and improving uh, some of the structures that we have in place um, for educational planning through college and career. So we're going to, um, obviously we've transitioned involved into our, um, uh, from our PA, our alum, our PA to Derby High School. We're going to continue that work. We're launching a partnership with Diamond for an active dark program. You're going to hear about that today at the regular school committee meeting. Um, we're going to expand our goals to expand enrollment in the Durfee's four early college pathways. And um, we're expanding our existing dual language. We, we opened it up today, uh, this week, for with kindergarten at Viveris. Next year, we'll roll that out. That's going to be a, a six, a five year. Every year, we'll roll out a grade level. And we're going to also expand some um, uh, access to early childhood videos. We've expanded those, convert some of the part time um, uh, pre Ks into full time, and we're going to continue to identify spacing and hopefully grow our pre K because we know that's a key lever in, uh, with student achievement. All right, and then I'll watch the. Oh, sorry. Just a quick point on that. Um, on part four, at the end, it's increase in PK enrollment, yep. pre-K. Yes. Um, and what, I know, and this is a draft, but uh, I know that before the pandemic hit, that's really hard. We had some pretty lofty goals yep. for pre-K. Obviously, the 
building the space was a, was, was a big issue, but the SOA money was there for it. Um, are we, what are you anticipating for like an increase possibly for pre-K for maybe not the school year, but I think that we, what we need to do first is identify some space. Um, we are, um, we have expanded uh, some of our pre-K classes. Uh, I think we're at capacity and we need to identify some alternative spaces so that we can grow um, pre-K. Yeah, I, I, um, that's okay, that, that's good to hear. I mean, I just, I just think that's a, that's key to any school district. Mm -hmm. so to absolutely, well, especially absolutely. The class. Okay, thank you. Okay. And then we have the facilities and capital improvements um, and transportation. Um, we're going to continue to be proactive, right? We need to make sure, I mean, we heard a little while ago, um, we have brand new building. We have lots of new buildings. We need to make sure that we take a proactive approach and make sure that we focus on preventative measures and maintenance so that we can um, uh, have buildings for a long time, right? And make sure that um, our buildings are withstanding the test of time. Uh, we're going to continue to develop a comprehensive plan to replace the air handling units and the HVAC uh, components in all buildings. Um, and we're going to start with a complete of analysis of each building, the age, the condition of the units, and create a plan for um, supporting that. And um, in addition, for transportation, uh, we're going to we have to improve our tiering uh, uh, for student transportation and. Um, successfully um, manage the completion of the Durfee High School building. Um, there are still lots of projects that are in the works. We're working on uh, launching phase two of Watson. Uh, we have the parking lot improvements at Talbot that are underway and are really going to be picking up. Um, the access road for uh, Henry Ward is starting that work. We have parking lot improvement at Sylvia. We have design and replacement of the roof at Pace, which is a big project. Where it also, with the old Durfee closing down, we are moving the special needs offices to the Pace Center. So um, they've started, they demoed uh, areas where fine arts used to be, and they're um, starting to uh, uh, put up walls and uh, dividing. So we're going to be creating a new special needs center over there. Um, and we have phase three of the demolition of the old Durfee High School. I think Durfee, there's, the target is that they're going to start demoing next week. They're starting from the inside. Um, there's going to be lots of work happening there, which is um, happening off to the Ray Street area and that access road. And um, obviously, we're going to have, once that's done, we'll do some improvements on the fields. We have a soccer stadium that's being built where that old high school is, the tennis courts, et cetera. So that work, um, the baseball field reconstruction, so all that work is um, going to be dependent on the completion of the demolition of the old Durfee. Lots of work happening. So, yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. We're here, Go right ahead. No, I, I was going to say, like, if hopefully, if we do all these things that we're saying we're going to do, we're going to have, um, you know, uh, some um, uh, efficient buildings, uh, efficient services for our students, transportation services, and really have um, that dirty complex really uh, become a hub of the community. One question I have is in regards to something. I mentioned the parking lot improvement, but we want to be uh, study for actually creating a second means of uh, egress, if you will, into the property. Um, I don't see that list. I'm not sure if that's tied with the parking lot improvement, but I definitely want to keep that rolling because that's a project I know. already you know, invested in, and you'd like to see that something happen there. Yep, I, sure. I actually talked to Mr. Uh, Pacheco about that because you had talked to me about um, few, that still error, some work that needs to be done. So uh, we can certainly add something in here um, that that work. And then to, to, to touch base on what William Hart said, are we looking into space for a free day? Are we, you know, as far as our facilities and operations go, are we looking at using the other building? We're talking about uh, Wiley School. Yep, uh, well, possibly I mean, using that or you know fixing up some of the other buildings or maybe even. Yeah, I, I think we need short-term and long-term plans, right? So if we're going to do the Wiley School, that's going to be some years away, right, to do all that repair work and get it up to code. And we need to have some short-term goals, looking at alternative spaces that perhaps we can rent, as well as a long-term plan for expanding and creating maybe an early learning center. So I'm not sure if any of that. So know, if there's something we want to add to this, I'm not sure. I'm just saying it's a draft. No, we, we, we Okay, no, that's, that's what this is for, right? right. So absolutely, we can add that to it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
the ideal thinking. Well, and then finally, uh, we one have, more. so since, not finally, I think that we have one more, but technology, right? So that's, we have a department now. Uh, before COVID, we've had uh, a few people that worked in, in the tech department, but if technology has exploded, right? And the need for us to have good systems in place and really, um, I think that if, if anything, what COVID did was it exposed our need to have a well-functioning department where they have the support that they need to make sure that our schools have the support that they need, right? So um, uh, Scott has a lot of goals. He wants to make sure that our, um, you know, all of our schools are equipped with the, um, you know, newest technology, that teachers have the resources that they need, and that we have the training um, that we're supposed to be uh, providing for our students and for our staff. So one of the things is that this infrastructure upgrades that he's put on here, we want to make sure that we have connectivity, we have some schools that we're upgrading to. So when you look at, uh, for instance, the Green School, that was the newest uh, uh, school for a long time, many years back, right? But uh, what we need to do is have that um, uh, proactive plan so that we are updating on a regular basis so we're not waiting for things to break down before we, we attack that, uh, right? So Scott's infrastructure program is to take the schools and tier them and make sure that everybody's online and, and ready to, uh, to uh, for work, um, make sure that they're able to access the internet and use it um, in, in their everyday work. So, Yes. I just had one uh, just comment on one prior about trans it says transportation costs will remain stable. I personally think that we, that's what we all would like, but mm -hmm. I think if you put that in as part of your goals, you're setting yourself up because that's out of your control sometimes. You could do the best job possible and it might go up. So I I'm not sure that that should be something we would judge you on per se. Uh, the other one is implement at the bottom of the page the Chromebook initiative for all students to be true one to one. I thought that we are one to one, and we have plenty of Chromebooks and plenty of money. I, I and I think that we are. Are the case or am I missing something? No, uh, I think that we have plenty of Chromebooks. Um, I think that the middle schools, the Verizon grant helped us with that initiative because all the middle school kids uh, received a Verizon uh, Chromebook. I think that we've had our enrollment um, has uh, gone up somewhat, so we are we are creating a um, restocking uh, supply so that we can make sure that all schools have what they need, and in addition have supplies so that if the uh, Chromebook breaks down, students um, uses it alone or until we repair it, and then do that. So we want to have a solid system in place where we have a true one to one. We did get lots of Chromebooks back from kids using them over the summer but some of those are in repair, which is maybe keeping some of the schools just shy of the one-to-one -one because they are out to be repaired. So we want to make sure that we have enough Chromebooks for every single person, the adults as well as kids. Um, every I would give an example. My feeling is with the amount of resources that we have, plus mm -hmm. all the other stuff, we should be one-to-one -one and then some at this point. We should have plenty of reserves. So I don't know if the language in here needs to change to say, policies and protocols about it or something, but if you ask me, and I, if anybody in the community asks us, yeah, we're one-to-one. -one. We have 10,000 kids, we have 10,000 Chromebooks. So uh, if that's not the case, then mm -hmm. I think we need to have that conversation because we shouldn't. Yeah, and I think that some of that is supply and demand, right? So we ordered plenty of extra Chromebooks. Uh, we are, I know that one of the things that we asked Scott and his team to do is to inventory every single school to see how many each one has so that we can supplement <coughs> the difference. So I can share that information with you exactly how many we have at each school as well as um, what the enrollment is at the Yeah, that's fine. I, I don't doubt that you know you're doing the best you can to grow up with it. Just my point is if we have if we have ten thousand students we should have twelve thousand promos. I agree. If we don't have that then we need an order to come in from but, you know, whatever it is, so. We have more going. Um, Thank you. Kevin, just so, in, in the sense of true one-to-one, -one, right now, when we started this Chromebook initiative years ago, those devices are now end of life. So we have 2,000 or so Chromebooks that are being used every day now. Typically, they're in Chromebook <coughs> Park and used in the classrooms. Now they're going back and forth from school to home. So we actually have right now just under 3,000 Chromebooks that are in some sort of repair. So the plan is that I mean, when we say true one-to-one -one is to have spares so that way if a Chromebook comes in for the fifth time, 
It's not going back into the hands of a student. It goes into a pile for parts. And then we're using the new Chromebooks, and there's actually something tonight so that we can ingest new. We have to have a, a cycle of life program here now because they're being used so much. So we're always going to be at that 10,000 number. We're a little over it right now. But if you step back and look at the amount of Chromebooks we have, we really have 3,000 that are in need of some type of repair. So we're under that number. So as we're repairing, we're getting back out into the buildings. Um, Probably one thing that COVID has shown us is we didn't have like a, a life cycle plan on any of these Chromebooks now. So now we're hoping to have, my envision is to have a closet somewhere where we have five, 600 Chromebooks. So that way, every year we're getting rid of the older devices and getting the newer technology in there. And then we're not fixing and trying to Frankenstein Chromebooks. As so you're we saying are. we have 10,000 students, we have 3,000 in repair, that means you only have 7,000 working Chromebooks? So we have, as the repairs come out, they literally go back out. So the, the, the repair time on them is actually right now, they're doing about three or 400 a day. But right now the buildings have enough Chromebooks to, to sustain their levels right now, right? But what we're doing is we're trying to get those Chromebooks to not even get back into the hands of the kids, the ones that are just non-repairable. So we actually have a stash of brand new Chromebooks. So now when my staff says to me, Scott, this one's come in 11 times, and it, it can't go back out when we send out a new Chromebook. But what I'd like to be able to do now is, at the end of every summer, look at the Chromebooks and say, for example, like uh, Laterno School. We look at the model numbers that they have. There are a lot of what we call the G3 model. We need to phase those out and constantly have this program where we're replenishing these new Chromebooks so that we're not dealing with the systemic issues we're having right now. No, I hear what you're saying. The languages would need to change that. Yep. We currently have a one-to-one. -one. You want to make it more robust and have a backup plan on the left. This said we haven't had it, so that was the confusion. Okay. But if we need more money, then money yep. is what we have right now. So thank you. Anything further? And, and finally, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Finally, we have our human capital um, goal. Uh, our goal is a continuation goal. Obviously, with COVID last year, um, some of these. Uh, goals were not uh, realized uh, because uh, people were mostly old. So we're, our goal is to continue to develop and strengthen our teacher and leadership that, um, uh, diversification, pipeline, retention, et cetera. So we need to make sure we have a, a healthy uh, professional development plan uh, for our parents, for our teachers, for our leaders. Um, we're going to be expanding our JET program, continuing with our partnerships with some of our neighboring um, uh, colleges so that we can get people in and, and create this pipeline um, to uh, for hiring. Uh, so our goal is to, I will say that those, if you look at the success for implementation, when we do the final goals, we'll have those numbers because everything's been so fluid. We don't have, we're, we're tracking those numbers and we'll have the, the numbers of where we were in regards to where we need to be. We'll have those um, in there. Can I just ask, and I know that I mentioned it last year when we talked to the here at Gold Settings with us, that we, that you have a goal, the community agrees, obviously, but that we attempt to make our staff at all levels more diverse. Um, you know, whether it's active recruiting, whether it's a program that we initiate here in our district, I, I just think that I'm a strong believer that our classrooms and our professionals have to reflect the population that's sitting before them. Um, and, and, and so I know our district has historically had you know, relatively low numbers, um, but I think making it a goal, and I think the superintendent, I don't know if he said increase it by 1% or whatever it was, which I thought was real low uh, given the number of staff, that could mean bringing one or two people on and the goal was met. But, you know, and I don't know what percentage it needs to be, but I, I think that needs to remain in focus mm -hmm. uh, for us. And again, you know, obviously we'll work with our partners with the JET program, but you know, whether Florida has to create its own or whether we do some sort of recruitment fair or something, um, I, I really think that that needs to continue to be a focus for a district like Fall River. If we truly want to call ourselves inclusive uh, and diverse, I think we really need to make a focus on making sure that the staff and the adults that stand before children are a representation of the district itself. And so I'd like, to, in some form or fashion, that to be worked into, into the goals. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank
Okay, I could not agree more. Um, we, will, we will make sure that we call that out specifically of how we're going to recruit. Um, I think that once we have the data, you will see that this year um, the numbers are much better. Um, some schools did a really good job, but I, I do think that there's still lots of work that needs to be done in that area, and we need to be actively um, uh, doing that work. It's that kind of stuff needs to be celebrated, but I don't think we rest on it. Oh, I don't think we say we did a great job, but okay, so we're fine now. I no. think we say we did a great job. How do we do that? How do we continue to do it? Yes. Um, we'll call it out and talk to the to do, you know, GATE uh, was good, but it was, in a way, um, it, it boxed kids in, the cohort, and they only, um, they, they were cohorted for the entire thing. So some students might be strong math students and might be um, in, in the honors math class, but they might not be as strong in ELA, and they might be in a regular ELA class. What we want to do is we want to make sure we, we broaden that access to all students and give them opportunities to be in accelerated classes, starting with the middle school because they're going to funnel into the high school to those honors classes and AP classes, pre-AP, et cetera. I think that we've trained our elementary teachers in the UDL, and one of the things that we need to do is make sure that our teachers are differentiating in the classroom, supporting students who are um, uh, in need of additional support, and also creating opportunities for the kids who are ready to fly also are ready to fly and we're giving them um, uh, uh, opportunities to be successful and to, to work at their pace. Right, so my concern is just at the elementary level that those students are recognized and they're offered that. Yes. I think the UDL is what you talked about yes. previously. So is there a way to, to see them? How, how do we know those students, when they get to sixth grade, are going to go to that pathway? Is the guidance counselor going to recommend it? Is someone going to be there to say, this student needs to be in the next class? Yes, usually students who are placed in honors um, they will be recommended by a school-based team, and they, it will be a combination of just, not just one test, a combination of the student work, um, their assessments, et cetera, and then they will be recommended, teacher recommendation, and they'll be recommended for the honors program. And, and if I'm saying the same thing over and over, I'm sorry. No, no. So on the third grade level, those teachers will begin to talk maybe to the fourth grade, yes. and then the fourth grade will talk to the fifth grade, all the way up the chain, because I just, we capture those students at, in the third grade right. with the GATE program. And both of my oldest kids were in the program. I think it's a mm -hmm. great program. If you look at some of the kids who graduated last year, they were with my, my daughter who graduated last year. A lot of that's going on. It's a college for engineering, a lot of STEM students. So you can see there are top 10 of the number of them GATE students. So I just want to, I don't want to not target the students in the elementary level. I don't want to wait until middle school, right? Okay. I want to make yep. sure they're getting some extra, you know, Continue to support our students, yes. Thank you. Thank you. I, 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 I just have to agree with Mr. Adia 100%. I think she has to pair this list down for uh, about 200 items there. <laughs> that's, well, I mean, a lot that's, of it you that's... do automatically, but at the same time, you want to make sure when you're being assessed that it looks, yep. uh, looks, it looks being dangerous. Okay. Thanks. So that's what we'll do. We'll go back to the table. Pull out the my the minutia and the yeah, details yeah, yeah, yeah. we're doing automatically. You pick out the big ticket items and keep them together. Motion to again. Second. Mm. All in favor? Aye. Opposed.